Well, welcome back to GMA3 and what remarkable news we have this morning. Pfizer and BioNTech have announced that early analysis of their phase three COVID-19 vaccine trial has shown more than 90% Efficacy, a number much higher than expected. Yeah, they were hoping for anything at 50% yeah. or greater. That's yeah. a lot greater. We're going to turn it now to our very own Dr. Jen Ashen with more on this. Yeah, and this has been a day marked with the words cautious optimism, but I want to bring in Pfizer chairman and CEO Dr. Albert Borla for the latest on this big news. Dr. Borla, I know you're having a busy day. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you've announced, Pfizer has announced that the vaccine has shown over 90% efficacy in protecting trial participants with no previous history of infection from SARS-CoV-2. Obviously, that's good news. But now let's talk about safety. What do we know about the durability of this vaccine? And if it gets emergency use authorization with just over two months of safety data, how confident can we be that it will be safe long term? Thank you very much for having me. And thank you for, of course, the interest that I know is the interest of all the world. Indeed, the vaccine was uh, proven to be very efficacious, uh, overwhelmingly, and uh, that was uh, big news for me as well. Uh, we feel very good about the safety. We published safety data of approximately 6,000 patients back in October. Of course, they were unblinded. Uh, when we had uh, an R&D day at Pfizer and presented uh, the, the newest achievements of our R&D organization. Uh, right now, uh, we have uh, 40,000 people that have received a second uh, dose. And uh, the data that the independent uh, committee of experts reviewed uh, yesterday, uh, they are matching pretty much uh, the data that we had at 6,000 people. So the committee reported to us no safety concerns and uh, tolerability profile that uh, it's among uh, uh, the very good that we have seen in any vaccine so far. But Dr. Berla, just quickly for that safety, there's short-term safety and tolerability, and then there's long-term safety. So with going for emergency use authorization at just over two months, uh, what about side effects that may not potentially become apparent until much further down the road? Yeah, I think that uh, this is why we'll continue monitoring uh, the safety of uh, the vaccine for the next uh, two years to make sure that everything is fine. Keep in mind that um, to get a full approval, uh, typically for products, they are requiring six months of, uh, of uh, safety data. I think we will have uh, two months for the medium. We will have more than three months for the original participants. And um, of course, uh, it's up to the independent experts committee that the FDA will ask and of course FDA to assess uh, the safety data and how comfortable they are. And we will all submit if we feel comfortable about this. Understood. And as you well know, Dr. Borla, there is a fair amount of mistrust, especially in the United States, about a vaccine that has been developed and produced so quickly. Now, Pfizer chose deliberately not to participate in Operation Warp Speed in the same way that other vaccine developers uh, have done. But yet you have been promised nearly two billion dollars to develop to deliver about 100 million doses to the federal government. But you didn't accept federal money for research and development. Take us through what was involved in that decision. No, you are right, first of all, that um, there is a lot of skepticism among uh, individuals, among, uh, let's say, citizens of America, uh, that, uh, frankly, they are confused. And I think the main reason for that, it is because instead of having scientists debating uh, the vaccine, uh, the merits of this vaccine, we had uh, uh, politicians. This didn't help at all. Uh, for this reason, uh, we try to be extremely transparent, not only us, but I believe the entire pharmaceutical industry. And uh, we published our protocols. We pledged not to submit to any uh, authorities unless we have a, a conclusive readout of a phase three uh, data. Uh, we made sure that uh, we, we made clear to all that the only pressure we feel it is the pressure of the billions of people that are investing their hopes on us right now. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, Pfizer selected not to take money from Operation War Speed, not to take money from the U.S. government or from any government at all. It's not that we are uh, arrogant or we believe that uh, we can do it alone, and it's not also that uh, we did. Then we don't need money. This is a very big uh, investment that Pfizer did, and it was a very difficult decision for me. 
The reason why I did it was because I wanted to liberate our scientists from any bureaucracy that could come by accepting uh, money. Really, I wanted to unleash the power of our scientists. What I told them was, you discuss among yourselves only what is the best way, and take it in mind you have an open checkbook from us. So this is what it happened, and uh, in retrospect, I think it is uh, a very good dev uh, development. I have to say that uh, we had wonderful collaboration with uh, the Operation Work Speed uh, people, both in Barda, in the U.S. Army, and with the head of this uh, operation. And uh, we mm -hmm. also, of course, signed the commercial agreement with them. This commercial agreement uh, says that uh, we can receive approximately $20 per each dose. Mm -hmm. But of course, only if we are successful. In case of failure, uh, the whole bill goes to Pfizer, and we were ready to do that. Well, Dr. Uh, Borla, certainly all eyes of the world uh, looking for some good news in the fight against this virus. Uh, Pfizer CEO, Dr. Albert Borla, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.